Hello everyone, I'm Bra Mithra. Welcome back. It's Lantern Year 18. It's time for the Lion God. I've always said in during Season 1, if you're going to fight the Lion God, you want to do it Lantern Year 18, because you can still fight a level 1. Uh, it is that year. It's Lantern Year 18, and I'm going to do it. This is the fight of the Lion God. We are hunting it. We are fighting it. We had the showdown. Again, I've always said, been very open about it, I usually record intros for showdown uh, episodes after, just in case I made a big mistake and I want to be able to address it in the intro, or if something went wrong, I can talk about it, or whatever. No big mistakes in this. Uh, this is, I've seen how long the fight is. Um, it's a long, it's going to be a longer episode. <laughs> it's a It's a level one hunt, so the hunt phase is pretty short. So the length of this video that you see is mostly the showdown. <laughs> um, so with that said, Lion God has a, a you, you need to approach him very, he's very strategic. Um, I love sharing Kingdom of Death with people. That's what I love doing. I love being active in the community. I want to make videos. I want to do stuff to promote Kingdom of Death as much as I can and share with as many people as possible and get the word out about how great the game really is and give my take to it. I'm not the only person doing that. Of course, there's other people doing that. That's why I said I love being part of the community. Um... But I, I make make my I play the game knowing that I'm making a video, and I try to play quickly. Uh -huh. So, you know, I, I do quick assessments and I just read it. It's like it's like okay, failure, failure, wound, failure. I'll do the failures on top and the wounds because I'm probably not going to fail, right? And I don't really sit there and read every single card. Lion God, you might have to sit there and read every single card and plan out for every single possibility. His hit location deck and his AI cards have massive amounts of swingingness in them. And if you play quick because you know that you're making a video and you want to keep it, you know, you don't want to make a three-hour video. <laughs> so, uh, halfway through maybe this showdown or whatever, or you may know it's going to slow down. I'm going to have to slow down. I'm going to have to read all the cards and everything. And I'm going to have to cat I circle it. Every time, every twice per round, even. Rawhide headband, twice per round, perhaps. Surge and dash with every single person, every single round. <laughs> Spend a lot of survival. It took a while to edit this episode as well, because there's a lot of survival. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, uh, <laughs> with that said, all that, there, there's very, the Lion God requires very, facing he, he's very it's a very strategic fight and if and if i'm doing it carelessly you're going to die <laughs> uh and i started off carelessly or not carelessly i started off playing at a, a faster speed i always play at a faster speed sometimes i make mistakes and i misread a card or or just you know don't don't notice because i my brain takes shortcuts and i'm trying to do quick stuff and in this if you move even one space from where i should have been or made a monster face the wrong way it's it's very very bad results <laughs> is the best way I can put it. So there are three instances in this video when I was editing it that had very bad results. Uh, the first one I just you know the first time I just said fine whatever I made this bad result I'm playing too quickly I need to slow down. Then it happened again where you know I got a little bit better and the rounds passed I. It, I sped up again, looking at the time. It happened again. <laughs> I misread something or moved someone one space too far where they should have been, even after planning for it. And there's going to be a round that I'm just planning around a reaction or an AI card. That's the entire round. And then I plan for it, and then I do it real quick, and it's because I did it quick that I, miss, that I missed something or I did something out of order. So there is one time in this. The first time I've ever think I've had to take a play back because I put the card back. I set it, I laid everything out, I put it on the green screen, I laid it there, I kept it there, I moved all around where I should have been, had did all my dashing, got out of line of sight, did everything I needed to do, and then I put the card back on top of the deck even though there was another card below it. And then I drew a different card, right? And I, I made very reference to it as I'm doing. You, you'll see, I... I Planned around this card happening, and then it doesn't happen because I miss I misput the card back wrong. <laughs> so
So I had to take it back because I was like, wait, this isn't what's supposed to happen. So then I, I, I played it back the way it was, which is fine in my opinion because I had Cat Eye circle it in to see that hit location. So it was my own fault, and I even mentioned I need to put this wound on the bottom. <laughs> so that happens. Uh, now this also brings up the other thing that came up with Season 1 when I had an antelope fight that went almost three hours, and that could happen. And this video is long, and this showdown is long, and there's probably... It, it opens up the question, so feel free, and I, I really do stress to, to leave in the comments, I, I'm, I don't want to edit anything. I've always said that. I'm a purist. That's why the videos are going to be two hours normally for me for a showdown. Well, not two hours. They're going to be like an hour and a half. Hour, hour and a half. Uh, and that's with me playing hastily. <laughs> uh, this is a candidate for where that door can open again and the topic can be discussed where maybe I just do when I when I draw a card or something that says okay I need to get everybody out of the way and then I just do it and I don't say I'm gonna surge I'm gonna surge. I just speed up the editing and it just says look now you can see me moving around and I'm getting in position because I clearly said I needed to do this where you don't need to actually watch me do it um, that's a, that's an option. So I'm, I might overly timestamp this intro as, or the, the episode as well, so you can miss those points, or we'll, we'll see what happens in the comments. So uh, Lion God, <laughs> it's uh, we'll see what happens. What happens? It's 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 a rough. It's rough. <laughs>
still. Uh, anybody else need... Yes, Atrium could go for losing his disorders. So let's go ahead and roll with him to lose his disorders. Uh, six, I think that's losing a disorder. Uh, gain understanding and remove a disorder of your choice. So he's going to remove uh, Rageaholic. It's gone. And then what did he do? gain one understanding? So he gains an understanding. Uh, Lee doesn't need to roll. She doesn't have any disorders. So as first hunt event, uh, let's go base or now it's an actual monster hunt event. So we'll go with Kenna. She's going to go... Oh, no. Oh, no, this one's not bad. For a second, I thought it was something else. <laughs> There's another one that has a story event attached to it, I think. I don't remember. But uh, these these events can be so bad. Uh, these these Lion God Hunt events can be... They're, they're good and bad. So, uh, the landscape before the survivors is ripped to shreds. Rubble is strewn everywhere, bearing deep, silver-filled gashes. Whatever caused... This destruction appears to have punched several holes in the earth itself, revealing clusters of subterranean outcroppings. All survivors may descend to mineral gathering, um, worm tunnels, which I don't remember if we really want to do. Uh, mineral gathering, worm tunnels, let me just look real quick. I thought I marked it because I know I brought a... S um, uh, worm tunnels. Let's see. Yeah, you can die down there again. I don't want to do that. Because <laughs> you can die down there. So this is not, yeah, not good. Not doing that. We're not going to be doing worm tunnels. Uh, next, we actually have mineral gathering. <laughs> and then a random hunt event. So we're going to do it with atrium. So mineral gathering first. Then the, yeah, a random hunt event. So mineral gathering now, actual one. We won't be descending into the worm tunnels. However, we will be doing regular old mineral gathering. Um, it is so... What is it? Every survivor with a pickaxe rolls on the mineral gathering, but it's only Atrium who has a pickaxe, so here we go. Uh, Lantern 10. Game 1, scrap. Uh, we are not doing... Resolve... Oh. Game... One scrap, basic resource. If this event occurs after overwhelming darkness, resolve all. Okay, yeah. So we got one scrap. Not super great, but okay. One scrap. And now we do the actual random hunt event. Atrium is still the uh, 41. 41. A nightmare. Oh no. Nightmare. Oh wait. Oh no. Ah, uh, this is bad. Nightmare. The event revealed their dreams of the upcoming hunt. The great beast vanishes during their battle and secretly follows them back to the settlement. They helplessly watch as it devours all they know and love. The event revealer gains 1d10 insanity and minus 1 evasion. Um, okay. Uh, we're, we're, well, I was about to roll, but we'll wait, because I think I have to roll... The settlement has a savior. They appear in the dream and defend their home. The event revealer gains 1d5 survival. If no survivor in the settlement or hunting party has a twilight sword, uh, there is someone with a twilight sword. They wait to find the twilight sword, blah, 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 blah. They may select blah, 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 blah. So we don't gain the twilight sword, which is fine. Uh, we're just going to gain the minus one evasion and 1d10 insanity. So let's do the 1d10 insanity. Uh, five. We do not gain, uh, so I have a minus one token, which I'll probably get rid of when we do Overwhelming Darkness. So I'm not going to grab it at the moment, but I'll remember I have it. So minus one evasion token, and then we have nine insanity now, because we just gained D5. All right, so now we have Yisa doing the hunt's fault line. Oh no. <laughs> Suddenly the ground rumbles and tears, throwing the survivors into chaos. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest rolling survivor becomes a straggler. They tumble into the newly formed chasm and roll on the table. Oh no. 
Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Oh no. So, stragglers, anybody have, whatchamacallit, everybody here is a tinkerer. Okay, so no one has that thing. So, straggler, let's go. Uh, Kenna. Okay, 10. Good. She's not going to be the straggler. Isa. Also a 10. Might not be the straggler. Atrium. A 9. Uh, sorry, Lee, but it looks... Yeah, Lee is the straggler with an 8. Are you kidding me? <laughs> sorry, Lee. <laughs> All right. Uh, now they have to roll again. Um... So now they tumble and a four. Uh, you safely recover unharmed, but traumatized by the experience. Suffer 1d10 brain event damage. Seven brain event damage. Great. That's going to put her at zero insanity. Uh, and check her box. Uh, okay, so she's at zero insanity with her box checked now. Let me grab a token for that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, now we have one more random hunt event, so let's just go with Lee. And it is indeed a random hunt event, so let's roll. Uh, three. <laughs> three. What do we have for three? Three. Yeah. Uh, cancer pigeons. Oh, man. Uh, the survivors are surrounded by the echoing coo of infant babble. Strange baby-faced birds circle overhead. Gripped with instinctual horror, the survivors break into a run. Each survivor rolls 1d10. The lowest scoring survivor becomes a straggler. If any survivor has noisy gear, minus two. Uh, no one has noisy gear as far as I can remember, correct? Yeah, no one, no one has noisy gear. No one has noisy gear. Um, each straggler rolls 1d10. Okay, let's go ahead. Kenna, uh, 6. Isa, 7. Atrium, 10. Lee, a 3. You're the straggler again, Lee. <laughs> okay, uh, now she rolls... Uh, okay, let's just hope. Uh, that's not good. Two. It's probably dead. Yep, dead inside. Uh, running and failing wildly. You suddenly, uh, find yourself panicked and alone, waiting canter pigeon, or cancer pigeons to send and mercilessly peck your back. Uh, they're happy cooing, filling your head with horror. An hour later, the other survivors find you balled up and weeping on the ground. You are dead inside. Cannot gain survival. <sighs> she can still spend it, but now she's dead inside. She cannot gain any more survival. Okay. Well, let's uh, continue on to Overwhelming Darkness. This is going very well. This is going very well. Okay, Overwhelming Darkness. Everyone's walked Pack of the Brave, because we have Song of the Brave, and... Uh, Kenna. A four. Minus one accuracy token. It's fine. She'll remove that. Um... Yisa. Uh, same thing. She's going to remove her accuracy token. Uh, Atrium. A nine, uh, suffer one damage to your arms, which is fine. He goes down to three. And then Lee, a four. Did everybody roll four except for Atrium? Uh, yeah, that's also minus one evasion. She can't gain survival. Everyone else gains survival. Or no, this is the minus one evasion. Uh, minus one evasion token. She can't gain survival, so then she'll remove her evasion token and we'll start the showdown. Uh, so luckily, yeah, we got to remove the evasion token from Song of the Brave when we arri on arrival. Uh, not super great, this hunt. Not terrible, but not really good at all. So, uh, that was a quick hunt. So, let's, uh, look. I forget. I don't think I draw any random terrain. Let me just look real quick. 
Uh, there's no random terrain. So, let's just begin with setting up the showdown, and then I've got some stuff to explain. All right, here we are. Everything's all set up for the Lion God. Uh, there's tons and tons and tons of terrain. <laughs> Uh, most of this is not very new, so we have topple pillar, giant stone face, three stone columns. There was no random terrain draws. Uh, those four other things are the lion statues. They are uh, obstacle, impassable, read hieroglyphics, and then uh, use once per showdown, roll d10, add your understanding to the roll result, on 11 plus, you may re-roll your next result on a story event during the showdown. Uh, it's really helpful if we decide to go down into the sinkholes and stuff and go to the necropolis. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing that. Um, just because... May <laughs> I don't know how this fight's going to go. <laughs> uh, we're not exactly like Lion God killing uh, settlement. <laughs> So, uh, we'll see how this even goes. So, I think I'm going to be avoiding going down to the Necropolis. Um, so, for the Lion God himself, we're fighting a level 1, which is 7 basic, 7 advanced, 1 legendary. He's got 8 movement and 14 toughness. And then he's got Heft, Hollow Earth, and Whiplash. So, we'll go with Whiplash, which is just crazy. <laughs> so... Uh, when a survivor attacks the Lion God from a space in the Whiplash Zone, they gain one bleeding token before drawing hit locations, unless they are in the monster's blind spot. If the survivor is surging, they gain an additional bleeding token. So, that is uh, not great. <laughs> then we have a Hollow Earth. Whenever an impos or impassable terrain tile becomes archived, not hefted, roll 1d10. On result 6 plus, a hidden passage uh, to the necropolis appears. Place a sinkhole terrain in as many spaces as the archive terrain tile occupied as possible. Then archive hollow earth. Then we have heft. Full move the monster towards the closest impassable terrain tile. Then if the monster is adjacent to it, remove it from the showdown board. Otherwise, perform basic action and end the monster's turn. All right, so those are all the traits. Uh, they'll, I'll explain them more when I actually when they actually happen. That's why they don't really feel like they do much now, <laughs> except for Whiplash. Whiplash is not good. Uh, so, with that said, uh, this is the starting positions. Not great, as you can see. Uh, <laughs> so we're just gonna have to. Ho There's other rules here that I'm not going to explain right now, uh, like Relentless and stuff, but um we'll just have that come up when it comes up uh and i'm sure it will so uh this could just go really badly um i'm not super confident in this fight so let's just see how it goes first turn all right golden claw so here's a relentless guard <laughs> pick target closest threat in field of view in range uh luckily that's everybody so, um, move and attack target. So, speed 3, accuracy 3, damage 4, and then after damage. This attacks an additional monster level times. Roll that many extra hit location dice. So, it's like, yeah. So, if, if you get hit once, you don't need to roll again. You just start rolling hit location dice. So, that's not great. And then, if there are, are any threats in the monster's field of view, which there will be guaranteed to be, because I can't get out of it in the first turn, or I guess I could dash now to get out of it, but um, they're still going to be in the monster's field of view either way. I'd have to dash with everyone, which is probably just not worth it on this first turn. Um, well, we'll see. First, let's go through and see what happens. So, okay. He's guaranteed to do this. We're just going to have him go here. Uh, and attack Atrium here. So it's going to be speed 3, accuracy 3 plus. Atrium has 6 evasion. So it's going to be 3 speed, accuracy 9 plus. So let's go ahead, resolve that first. 
So three speed accuracy nine plus. Oops, I dropped one of the dice. So I'm just gonna reroll another one here. Okay, so uh, those are all misses. So grab that dice. So those are all misses. So there's no damage. So nothing else is being taken here. Now, if there are any threats in the monster's field of view, review, reveal the next AI card. And then if it is relentless, I have to play it. Um, so now I, I would dash here. But I wouldn't be able to attack if I did that. Now is the most dangerous, because next I'll be able to rawhide headband and stuff to be able to see if it's going to be duplicate relentless. Oh... <sighs> It would cost me quite a bit of survival. Everybody would have to dash. And I don't even know if everybody could get... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Everyone... Could, I could dash with everybody and get out of the way. Um... I think for this first one, I don't really mind risking it. Because this... See, the problem is... Relentless cards keep... Because the... Even though it's discarded, right? Now I know when this does reshuffle, I'll know the number of Relentless cards in there. Right now, I don't know what's in there. Uh, I know, basically, there's going to be half of the deck is Relentless. Because, basically, I think all basic attacks are Relentless. And, as you can see, 7-7. Seven, seven. So he's got 15 cards in there. Seven of which I think are guaranteed to be relentless every single time. I think all basic are relentless. So it's a 50-50 shot. Uh, the reason why I wouldn't really want to do that dashing is because then I'm spending two survival just to get back. I think I would take the 50-50 shot now. I think it's probably worth it. <laughs> all right, let's see. Uh, so it's not relentless. But I do reveal it now. Which is cudgel. It would have been well. I'm just gonna leave it up. So it's not relentless. So that's not great. It means there's a lot more relentless in there. But at least I get to attack now. Um, when a survivor attacks the Lion God from within the Whiplash Zone. Okay. So it's not if I activate within the Whiplash Zone. Um, still not great here. So I need to get in the blind spot. Um, this is just not great here. So, <sighs> that Slenderman settlement event made kind of not insane. And then she also has three understanding now, so she can't depart with her dormant cloak anymore. Uh, so, she can activate her Twilight Sword, which is just not great. But, I mean, luckily she has the Adventure Sword, so I guess it kind of worked out. But the Adventure Sword is not as accurate. Um, so, I... I I think what I'm going to do is shoot first. Well, we'll see what the hit location is because I get to see this because of uh, uh, Wisdom Potion. So let's see what this first one is. Petrified Shoulder Blade. Wound. Full move the Lion God forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Any survivor it passes over will suffer grab and gain one bleeding token. Um, that's gonna suck. Uh, but now's the best time to attack with the the arrow, I guess. Because if I do end up wounding it, uh, at least I know, I know where it's going. It's going forward. Um, alright, so I'm gonna attack with the arrow. Uh, so the whiplash zone is three squares, so I just need to get out of the... Uh, whiplash zone would be here, is out of the whiplash zone. One, two, three, four. Actually, here is. One, two, three. Yeah, so I'm out of the whiplash zone. And now I can attack with the arrow. Uh, so Clawhead Arrow, which is one speed, accuracy six plus. Uh, Lee has two accuracy, so it's accuracy four plus. So let's go see if we just hit. Okay, that's it. That is. The five's at least a hit. Uh, so he's going to gain a minus one evasion now. Uh, where's minus one evasion? 
So he gains minus one evasion, which is perfect. Um, now let's see if this gets wounded. And it's just going to move forward. Uh, seven. Wait, what am I doing? I didn't even add it. It's going to be a wound, I think. Uh, so she's got three strength. Arrow has six. Makes it nine. Plus seven is uh, 16. Yeah, it's got toughness 14, so this is going to be a wound. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it is a wound. Not great because, I mean, at least Cudgel's discarded. Uh, flip this back down. Okay, now it's going to move forward. Full move line got forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. So no one's going to grab, grab, but... Um, One, two, or one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, he makes it all the way to the end here. That's going to be discarded. Um, now we, first we roll for Hollow Earth, so it's on a six plus. Uh, okay, so sinkhole. So the sinkhole does appear now and then we archive hollow earth so it can't appear again so this just is done now hollow earth's now done uh sinkhole did i not grab sinkhole i grabbed this but i did not, did not grab the actual terrain itself okay so there's sinkhole uh survivors may not voluntarily pass through the sinkhole if any survivor blah 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 uh i don't i'm gonna do this but Uh, if they get knocked knocked back into the sinkhole, they die. Basically it, but I gotta go grab it real quick. I can't believe I forgot to grab it. Okay, so sinkhole. It's gonna go right there. Um not great. <laughs> um I just now I just gotta get everybody out of field of view. So um one, two. This would still make Atrium the closest, I think, or four. This is out of field of view, because it would be right here to cut through it. So that's out of field of view. Just get her to here, out of field of view. Her to there is out of field of view. So everybody's out of field of view now. Uh, actually, I think I can get a little... I, think I can go to here with Kana, because what's probably going to happen is he's going to come here. And then attack Atrium. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so it's going to do that. Uh, Rosisa was here. One, two, three, four, five. She can get to there. Oh, you still only have four movement, so. Uh, one, two, three, four is not out of line of sight. This is out of line of sight, though. Okay. So, uh, that's gonna that's gonna be the line of sight stuff. Okay. Um, so Atrium's still the closest. Let's go with the next AI card and see what happens. He, okay, another relentless. Uh, oh wait, I should. You know what? I should. I should headband. Um, that's what I should have done. Head because. Lee, no, I'd have to surge. No, Kenna could headband. That's what I should do. So uh, let me headband. Um, okay. Okay. Well, okay. So th there's a mood here. So that, that's actually good. So we'll just do what it was because that stopped the relentless. <laughs> so that's actually a good thing. So um. I don't even care what what the Aeon thing was. I mean, it's a mood. It would I could see it would have triggered drawing an AI card, but I'd rather stop relentless because this is going to get drawn anyway. Whether I put that on top or this on top, it would have been drawn anyway. So that's why that wasn't really much of a choice. That's why I, I kind of breezed through it. Uh, okay, so this is closest threat in field of view in range, which I just counted out. It's going to be Atrium. Oh no, he's not in field of view. So he's going to just mourn. I don't, I don't remember. Maybe I don't want Atrium here. Maybe I want Atrium here just so he gets attacked. I forget what Morn does. Okay, so Morn. If there are no impassable terrain tiles, 
monster gains plus one damage token. There are, definitely. Otherwise, move the Lion God to the closest impassable terrain tile. It ends its movement adjacent to the tile, archive it, and all non-death survivors suffer two brain damage. Uh, I think I'd rather Atrium get targeted now that I... So, the better play... I should have read Morn first. The better play was not moving Atrium here. The better play would have been actually leaving him right here. Putting him like here, I think, would have been the better play. Uh, that's fine. I'll just I'll just make the mistake. So now that I uh, now that I remember what Morn does, it, it would have been better. So. All non-death survivors suffer two brain damage. Okay, so kind of just goes down to zero. This is already at zero, so she's going to trigger thing. Uh, what should we call it? Um, trauma five. What's brain trauma? Brain trauma five. Danger seizure. You thrust but wildly, dealing one damage to yourself and every adjacent gain of random disorder. And 1d5 insanity. One insanity. So she's at one insanity and she's going to gain a random disorder. Uh, this ends his turn. Now there's two Relentless in the deck. Uh, I also shuffled in the new disorders for Lion God and stuff, so... See what happens. This That was such a bad play. I should have let Atrium get targeted. Now I, now I know that it's better to get Atrium targeted. Uh, Sun Drunk. That's not good, I don't think. Uh. Oh, that's not bad. Okay, if you have any plus one strength tokens, you cannot dash, dodge, or run away. Uh. She doesn't have any plus one strength tokens. So, Sun Drunk's not that big of a deal. So, she gains Sun Drunk. Okay. Um. Hmm, so bad. This was, that was such a dumb move to, to put everybody out of field of view. God, that was so that was that was not smart. Okay, um Oh I need to do So Atrium comes down to seven. Uh Lee is going to suffer brain trauma. Seven on the brain trauma. Uh Lunacy, random disorder, one D five, insanity. She gains four insanity. She's also going to gain random disorder. Uh, where's her thing? So she's at four insanity. And another random disorder. Okay. This was that was such a bad move. That was a that was such a bad bad play. Ah. Post traumatic stress. I mean, she just can't depart next time, which it's not bad. She, she, unfortunately, she's probably done hunting because she got dead inside, so now she's got PTSD. <sighs> okay. Oh, that was such a bad play. Oh, that was such a bad play. Okay, so I just want to move Yisa to there. Uh, she can stay there. Kind of should probably get to here. One, two, three, four, five. And just move Atrium to there so he at least gets targeted. Now I just hope that this isn't... Re oh, now it's going to be whatever that mood was. Oh, uh, Wisdom Potion, gets, I get to see it. So he's going to embrace the Aeons. Such a bad play. This That was such a bad play to not let one person get targeted. When this comes into play, draw AI. Uh, Lion God. All Lion God attacks. Hit survivors on 2 plus in place of normal accuracy. Uh, whenever the Lion God moves over an impossible terrain tile, it is destroyed. Archive it. 
<sighs> Embrace the Aeons is no bueno. That's such not a good card. I should probably headband it away. I'm going to headband it away with Kenna. So, whatever. This card needs to be headbanded away. So now we're going to get Golden Claw on top. Which is another Relentless card. Oh my gosh. This is going so bad because I've misplayed this first turn so poorly. Uh, now the whole discard deck is going to be Relentless cards. Oh my gosh. This is such a bad play. Oh my gosh. I hate this fight. Oh, it's just so bad. <laughs> I hate this fight. Oh, this is going to go so poorly now. Okay. Um, This is just bad. This is that's such a bad misplay on that first turn. Okay, well, I need to... Well, I don't need to surge because I now know that that's not going to be a relentless card. Okay. Well, let's just have him do this Golden Claw. So, closest threat. In field of view, which is going to be Atrium, so whatever. It just moves there uh, to here. No, actually, I think I needed to be. I needed to be here. That would be better. There now. Well, no one can get in the blind spot now because of his facing. <sighs> this is so poorly done. Oh my gosh, I'm playing this so badly. I need. I should have been one step back. I should have been here is where I should be. So then when he comes, he goes like this. So that way he turns his back to Yisa. That's how I should have done it. Okay. Now we do Golden Claw here. Close to the right in field of view. Move an attack. This attack hits. This is the same card again. Uh, it's going to be a three on a nine, three speed, nine plus. Uh, those are all misses, so don't need to really worry about it. And then we know the next card's not relentless. Oh, the discard deck is looking so bad. Okay, so now embrace the Aeons is what it would have drawn, but it's not going to be that. Uh, I need to start removing these relentless cards the ai deck is so the discard deck or the discard is so bad there's three relentless cards in there okay at least now one, two, three, four, five. i can't i could dash to get into the back here so one two so i'll go to there at least with yisa uh i can't can't I circle it? I just can't worry about it. I'm going to have to just attack and hope I don't draw any... Uh, hope I don't draw the trap. The trap is really bad, but I, I just can't waste my actions. Because I really need to get rid of Embrace the Aeons. I mean, can't waste... I, I just have to, I have to take the risk that it's not in the first top three cards or whatever. Okay, so top four cards. So... He says four speed... Accuracy 5 plus, plus 1 from in the blind spot. Uh, minus 1 evasion, so it's, she hits on a 3 plus. So, um, actually I think she gained, I have blotted out, so she gained a bleed token because of blotted out. I just remembered I had blotted out. So when she suffered that trauma, she got a bleed token. Blotted out is so not good either. Okay, uh, so it's going to be 4 speed, hitting on a 3 plus for Yisa. She missed twice. Okay, so she missed twice. I'm only going to get two hits in, but that's probably fine because I she's not. Oh, stupid impervious cards. So, um, see if we can knock it down. That would be great. So she crits on an eight because she's got two luck. If we can knock it down, that'd be just absolutely great. Let's just hope we knock it down. Uh, we didn't knock it down, so nothing happens. Uh, the attacker loses two survival. <sighs> okay.
Okay, so attacker loses two survival. Actually, um, what's his wound reaction do? Turn the monster to face its blind spot. All survivors adjacent to the Lion God suffer bash. Yeah, that would have been bad. So we don't want that. So she's going to get knocked down because of bash. So let's just hope we get a critical. So she crits on an 8 and wounds on anything. Uh, it's a wound. It's not a crit, though. So it's one wound. We got rid of this card, at least. The one that makes him hit on 2+, plus, because that would have been bad. Uh... She's going to suffer Bash. He's wearing leather, so it doesn't matter for him. He ignores Bash. So she gets knocked down. Um, okay, so now she's knocked down. Now... Um, well, I guess uh, Lee... We'll, no, we'll, we'll see what happens, but I'll probably, okay, so Lee's going to go here, so she's not in field of view, and then she's going to, okay, I circle it now. Okay, none of those were the trap. Two of them were failure reactions, which is good. Uh, not great, but good at least. So, actually, the wound reaction doesn't really matter. Uh, and then two failure reactions. Okay, so all three of these are not that bad. So we can attack with Kenna and her um, sword. Uh, so we'll put the wound reaction on the bottom. And then we'll attack with Kenna and her sword. Uh, she's going to have to use so two to get to there. Uh, so Adventure Sword is what she's going to use, which is three speed. Uh, attacking for the blind spot. She is Adventure Sword 6 plus, tagging for the blind spot makes it a 5 plus. He's got minus 1 evasion, makes it a 4 plus. She's got 3 accuracy, so it hits on anything but a 1. Uh, here we go. Okay, so that's 3 wounds. We just looked at them. So, um, as long as we don't fail any of these, it's got toughness 14. I don't know if we can really fail any of them, but we'll leave the wound one first. Uh, the lance is increased minus one accuracy token or ends their attack. Okay, this doesn't matter. Lion God, okay, so this one's bad. So put that one in the bottom. Okay, let's go. Uh, the minus, we just gained the minus one accuracy token because it's not that big of a deal. Um, okay, so rolling the wound. She's got plus nine strength uh, because you add your courage. So she adds all nine of her courage. And then she's got regular 5 strength, so uh, that's already 14. So as long as she doesn't roll a 1, she'll wound because it's only got 14 toughness. So as long as she doesn't roll a 1, 5, that is not a uh, failure. That's a wound. Okay, that's one wound. Anything but a... Uh, this will be a wound. No, so then it will give it plus 3 toughness, which, again, I don't really mind. Okay, so that's still a wound. So it gains plus three toughness. So now I just need to, uh, on a three plus, because it goes up to 17 toughness. She had 14, so she just needs a three plus to not fail. Uh, nine is actually, I think, is a critical. Yeah, she's got plus two luck, so nine's actually a critical. Uh, the attacker gains 1d5 survival, which would be great if she wasn't so high. Okay, so she gained three, but she's already at seven, so we have a limit of eight, so she's at eight now. Uh, and that's another wound. Okay. Um, it'd be great if I were to critical with Atrium somehow. Um, should I... Uh, I guess I'll surge with Lee. Brings her down to five survival. She's can I circle it again? One. Two. Three. Okay, so there's a one. There's one reflex in here. So let's look at this reflex. Full move the lion forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. All survivors 
It passes over, suffer grab, and gain one bleed. Okay, um... What's this? If adjacent to the monster, attacker suffers knockback seven. If they collide with the train... Um, uh, okay. That's not great. A failure... Okay, so... Uh, let's put the wound... We'll go like that. Um... Or, no, not like that. What was I thinking? I want the reflex on the bottom. Uh, we're probably going to attack with Kenna. So, let's go ahead and surge with Lee. Brings her down to four. Or, no, we don't want to surge with Lee. Because she's going to need to cat eye circle it, like, all the time. Uh, let's encourage with Kenna. So she comes down to seven. Let's roll to see if we get... F so she does have to spend it. So she's encouraging Yisa here. Um, Yisa would have to dash to get out of the way. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and dash. So Yisa's going to dash. Brings her down to four survival. One, two, three, four. She'll get to here. Um, just like that. So spend one survival to dash with Lee to put her there just in case this thing runs forward now actually to go here because then if it does go forward here they should still be out of line of sight no they're definitely not going to be out of line of sight well we'll see what happens because it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy the terrain <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens at least they're not going to get grabbed and trampled they're going to get targeted but what can I do right if that's even if it runs forward that's on a, on a well yeah it's going to run forward unless I crit uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's, um... I guess we surge now. Coming down to six survival with Kenna. Surging. See if she gets back the survival. Nine. She does get back the survival. She goes up to seven. Okay, so now she's surging. So again... Uh, it's ex it's three speed again, hitting on a two. Did I say it was a two? She has three accuracy, minus one evasion. So it's a six plus with the Venture Sword. Three accuracy brings it down to three plus. Blind spot, two plus, minus one evasion. Yeah, so it's a, it's a two plus. Two plus with the Adventure Sword, attacking from the blind spot. Uh, it's three hits. Okay, we know what they're going to be. He drew them. So we have the super dense one that moves gonna move them forward. Okay. So this is on a failure. I don't know about failuring. Um let's see. So the failure. Well no, fail, failure is probably not likely, right? He's it she fails on, on a one. Because she has 14 strength. So she fails on a one. Probably not super likely. Okay, that's not a failure. So that's a one wound. Uh, now this will be a wound, so she's going to wound on a one. Okay, another four. Again, that's fine. Jason to the monster. Attack stuff is knocked back seven. Oh, this is why I didn't want this wound. This is why I put the reflex not at the bottom. Uh, either way, it's going to cancel. Yeah, why wouldn't I was wondering why I didn't put the reflex at the bottom and then dash. This is why I did that. Um, okay, well that was a mistake. So I could try to crit it. If I re-rolled, I could crit on an eight. That would be good. Should I re-roll and try well no, she's not gonna She's not gonna collide with any terrain. So that's fine. We'll just do that. So at least I wounded. Now he's going to suffer all this junk. So knockback seven. Uh, if they collide with any terrain, they don't. And then full move the lion god toward the attacker. Yeah, this is a bad one. I should have done the other one, the other reflex. Uh, that was another misplay. So I needed to do this reflex. This is the one I should have done, not this other wound. This wound is much worse than this reflex. 
So yeah, let me do this reflex. Because that's why I moved everybody else out of the way. Because I figured he was going to run forward. Um, I should have read the wound before. So... Um, all right, that's fine. Whatever. I'll just play the misplay again. Playing, I'm playing very poorly. <sighs> so that's going to cause a, one wound. Um, so let's knock back all the way to here. Um, what wounds have I done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he's half dead. Um... So she's knocked back to here. She's not going to take any colliding damage. Uh, it's going to full move. Blue whip. Towards the attacker. And then it's going to... Uh, was this destroy? I can't remember if these are... Uh, where's Giant Stone Face? It's impassable. And so the lion statue is not destructible. It's just an obstacle. Okay, yeah, obstacles do not are not destructible. So um, I think he has a mood. If I remember right, it's mood or a trait. I think something <laughs> later ones he destroys all the terrain when he touches it. So this is not destroyed. That's not destroyed. Uh, he's going to suffer monster collision. So he's just knocked down. Okay, um, so now I need to encourage with Yisa, so, oh no, I need, I should, I need to encourage with Lee, yeah, so I encourage with Lee because I know I wasn't going to, but I have no choice now but to spend her survival to get him back up, and then I have to try to do this, to move to here and attack from the blind spot with uh, Riot Mace to try to get him to turn because of my bad playing here. So it's a two speed, accuracy three plus, uh, two plus. Because Riot Mace is, hits on a five plus, one from the blind spot brings down to four plus, minus one evasion, three plus, his one accuracy brings it to a two plus. So he's got two, and I can't even look. The tra this could be the trap, but at least it's on the tank. Uh, it's going to be a two, hitting on a two plus, two speed. Uh, it's a perfect hit. Two hits. It's probably going to draw the trap. Timeless Eye. Uh, but nothing true. So, uh, let's draw these two and just hope it's not the trap. One, two, neither of the trap. Okay, so this is going to be a first strike. Ender attack. Unless you gain one bleeding token, fine. He'll gain a bleeding token. Okay, then, uh... Okay, so now, uh, need to get a 9 plus would be great. So the Riot Mace is deadly. So other than that, Atrium's got 4 strength, Riot Mace has 5, so that's a 9. So he's wounding on a 6. No, he's got 14 toughness. So he's wounding on a 5. Wounding on a 5, critting on a 9. I need to crit on a 9. Okay, so I did wound... Lion Gun Tail reacts. Cancel all monster reactions till the end of the attack. Okay, so I did wound once, and now all monster reactions are canceled until the end of the attack. Uh, this doesn't have a crit on it now, so this is just a five. I really needed to crit that last one. So can't critical wound on this. Uh, I don't even wound. <laughs> right? I don't even wound. Uh, doesn't it, does it gain minus one toughness or something? No, that was the critical effect. So, don't even wound. Now nothing happens. Pfft. Okay, well... It's just so bad. So now let's see what this is, because of Wisdom Post and I get to see what it's going to do. Well, it's not a Relentless card. But it's also not a great card. It's actually a really bad card. Uh, well, it's not a Relentless card. That's the most important thing. Uh, so Crush is going to perform Heft here. So this is the card he gets... Just gonna do it, yeah. Perform heft. Uh, heft. 
So, full move the monster towards the closest impassable terrain tile. Then, if the monster is adjacent to it, remove it from the showdown board. Otherwise, perform basic action on the monster's turn. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that him being on this is make, still makes it the closest. Uh, I mean, it's this or the one he's on. So I'm just going to assume I'm going to have him lift the Lion God statue because that is... Uh, impassable rather than pick up the stone face. I don't know. He's on both of them. So he's going to pick up the Lion God statue. So great. Lion God statue picked up now. This just archives it. Um, okay, now closest survivor, which I get to actually pick Atrium because I had to dash into to make so he didn't attack Kenna. Uh, okay, move and attack. Plus two speed. It's going to be a nine plus. Two speed, nine plus. Uh, okay, so we actually hit. So I have to spend a survival. So he's going to spend a survival. It's down to six. Spend a survival to dodge that. Uh, place the hefted terrain tile in front of the monster, covering as many survivors as possible. Any survivors the terrain tiles covered suffer bash, which he's immune to, knockback 7, and 5 damage to hit locations. Okay, that's going to make him get all light wounded everywhere, and then suffer knockback 7. So he's got, he's got light wounds everywhere, except for the arms, where he's got a heavy wound. So, heavy wounds... On the arms, light wounds, everywhere else. I should just... Uh, no, I can I dash? No, I can't dash. Oh, I could dash, actually. Wait, yeah, I could dash this. Because there, there is a break here. Uh, so yeah, I, need, I definitely need to dash this. So he's going to spend another survival, go down to four or five survival. Then he needs to dash before I place this down. So he just needs to dash to here. Yeah, that'll be fine. Then just put it puts it down in front of him. So I can dash out of the way. That's what I should have done for sure. I thought it was for some reason I thought it was an after damage effect, but it's not. There's a break there. Okay, so that that's better. It's not as terrible. So, puts back four of everything. Okay. Four, four, four of everything. Okay. Um, still bad. Well, oh man, that deck is full of relentless cards. Oh, it's just full of relentless cards, that deck. What am I going to do? Well, this is terrible because of where Kenna is. Uh, and I can't even get here with... <sighs> so, uh, start of the next round. Let's just can I circle it with Lee and see what happens. So, one, two, three. Oh my gosh. So, no... So, it's going to be a first strike, which is going to happen. Unless you add... If you have less than five courage and your attack, move directly... So, it doesn't. But it's going to full move the Lion Cod... Way in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. All survivors passes over. Suffer grab and gain one bleeding token. Okay, so that's the first strike. At least I would send it away from Kenna. I'm thinking about doing that. Just to send it away from her. Uh, I might even attack with Fist and Tooth. So I don't waste these cards. Because... Um... Yeah, I'm thinking about even attacking with Fist and Tooth to not waste the cards here. <sighs> Can I do this? So if she attacks with Fist and Tooth... What does she hit with a Fist and Tooth? Uh, it'd be an 8. 
eight plus to hit three accuracy. So it'd be a two speed five. It'd be a three plus. I should have with this and tooth and have her discard. So I'll leave this on top. That means she'll draw it. And then I'll if she hits twice, she'll draw that one. And then she'll at least run towards Yisa, which I think is the best plan here. So I'll put it back in that order. Um, yeah, put it back in that order. Now, Kenna can attack with Fist and Tooth to draw that first strike card. So we'll go ahead and do that. So she hits on a 3+, plus, I say. Yeah, she'll hit 2 speed, 3+. plus. Let's hope she hits twice. Uh, she did not. Um, I'm thinking about re-rolling that. No, well, alright, I'm not going to re-roll that. So she'll just hit her once, which is going to trigger this uh, first strike card, like we said. So she does have courage. She's not going to get knocked down, and then we'll just see if she wounds. I don't even think she's going to wound, so she needs a 9 to wound, or critting on a 7. She'd crit on a 7, uh, but she needs a nine, 9 to wound. 9 to wound, or a crit on, so she's critting on a 7. Oh my gosh, she crit. So that cancels the reflex. Uh, Lion God... Oh, it's a black, oily substance. Attack her against plus one evasion. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she actually wounded it. <laughs> okay, so she wounded with fist and tooth. Uh, then she gains plus one evasion. Okay, so she gains plus one evasion. It's crazy. Okay, um, this changes everything. <laughs> I didn't think she would wound. <laughs> Um, I wanted it to run towards Issa. Well, I guess if I surge, right? So I already looked at these two. I can look at them again. Uh, okay, so they're going to come off the top of the deck in this order. I, I can't can I circle it again. But this is what I tried to draw just so I could get rid of it so Issa could have attacked into this. But if I surge and attack... Um, that's not a wound, but she's probably not going to wound. I could surge and attack with the with the uh, the sword. If I if I surge and attack with the, the sword, then I might draw the trap, which would just be absolutely abysmal, and it's very likely I'm going to draw the trap. Uh, but I could attack with fist and tooth again, and then hope that it runs forward. Uh, full move line got forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits. I really want it to go forward. I guess I'll surge with um, Fist and Tooth, I guess. Okay, so she's going to surge with Fist and Tooth. Brings her down to a 6. Uh, okay, so brings her down to a 6. Let's we'll see if we get her surge back. Do not. Okay, now it's again two speed hitting on a three plus. So that's two hits. So we draw those two. We already know exactly what they are. Uh, I can try to get the critical first. Okay, so let's try to get the critical. So hitting on a seven. Uh, I got the critical. I can't believe this. Lion God gains minus one toughness. More importantly, I just wounded again with her fist and tooth. <laughs> Uh, okay, now this one, I have to get a 7 to even wound, no, it's, now I need a 6, because the thing got minus 1 toughness, let me give it its minus 1 toughness, uh, minus 1 toughness, so I just need a 6 to wound, okay, so now a 6 to wound, so I didn't wound, This it doesn't move, not a super great happy fun time here, uh, so Wisdom Potion now, we get to see the last card, watch it be, it is a Relentless card, so Wisdom Potion is going to let us see this. That's going to put four out of five cards when I reshuffle that are going to be Relentless. Which is not good at all. Oh wait, but this one doesn't tell you to redraw. 
This is the legendary card. Are you kidding me? Closest survivor facing in field of view, which would still be uh, Atrium, which is fine. Yeah, this is actually perfect. I'm not going to do anything else. He's going to target Atrium. This one doesn't have me reshuffle the deck and doesn't have me target him. I can't believe that this card actually worked out perfectly. I can't believe that that's, that's the last card. Uh, okay. So, closest survivor fate. So, I just need to go one, two, three, four. Four. And then one, two. No, she doesn't need to move. So, it's going to go here. It'll be standing on this. Okay, uh, this is it. This is my chance to do this. Okay, so Feral Tyrant. It's going to be closest survivor facing a field of view. So we know it's going to be him. He's just going to go up and turn like this. So yeah, because he has to go up one. Boop, and then turn. So that puts him there. Uh, which is great because that's one, two, three. Yeah, that's within Yisa's thing. So, um, okay, it's going to be one speed. Whew. So the uh, target is doomed, so he can't spend anything. And he's going to have his insanity reduced to zero. That's going to happen. So now his insanity is reduced to zero. Target is doomed. There's nothing I can do about this. Uh, or I can't dodge or do anything about this. So I, the only thing I could do is re-roll. Um, but he hits on a 9 plus. Six, no, 8. He's got 6 evasion. So 8. Um, I gotta re-roll. So he's gonna spend his re-roll. His infinite lives re-roll. To re-roll this, his his own personal infinite lives re-roll. I can't believe I'm still rolling hitting here. I guess I use Lee's re-roll. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use Lee's re-roll. She doesn't have infinite lives, uh, but she's got no re-roll now. Okay, that's a miss. I can't believe how good I was rolling. Okay, so that was a miss. Finally, this thing just misses now. Um, nothing happens. So that's going to trigger the shuffling of the deck, which is one, two, three, four. It's five cards, almost all of them are relentless. Okay, uh, so that's the end of the turn. Okay, so... Uh, first, right away, we're kind of circling with, um, Lee here, which I guarantee, I mean, this, like, guaranteed to be the trap, right? One, two, there's the trap, okay. Okay, so, um, guaranteed to be the trap, pretty much. I can look at the third card, nah, I'll just look at the trap. So the trap is, is just, like, not good, like, at all, in general. So all survivors are doomed, full move toward... The attacker, all survivors adjacent to the Lion God suffer bash. Attacker suffers monster level plus five to two random hit locations and knockback ten. Um, archive any impassable terrain Slaver collides with. If the attacker encounters a board edge, roll on a ten. On a six plus, they're dead. So, so that's the trap. Um, I'm just going to put the trap on top. We're just going to try to trigger it in a very specific manner with Lee and her bow. So, one, two, three, four. That's all the movement she has. So one, two, three, four. She's gonna get to there. Let me reread this again. Uh, full move towards the attackers. No one's gonna collide right now. All survivors adjacent suffer bash, which would be Yisa unless I moved first. Um, well, I'll dash with Lee. So she'll come down to two survival. One, two, three. Then if I get to here, then he's going to go one, two, three, 
five, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's equidistant. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the fastest way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is, he'll go here. That'll put him here. Um, and then she's just going to get absolutely wrecked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. She won't hit the board edge. She'll stop right before it from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And this will get archived. And then she'll suffer just a ton of damage. So uh, that's where I need to be. And now I just need to... Oh, no, I can't dash. So I can't dash because I'm I have to shoot with the, the cumbersome weapon. So I can't dash. I'm dashing now to get to here and then shooting. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's how I have to do it because I can't. Which is fine. So because I can't dash and shoot because it's cumbersome. So I need to dash to get to there and now shoot with the cumbersome uh, bow. So it's going to be two speed, seven plus. She's got two accuracy, brings it down to five plus. He's got minus one, four plus. So it's going to be a four plus to hit. Uh, she can just roll. <laughs> here we go. Lucky. Good luck. I need to hit here. So four plus. Okay, that's two hits. That's just going to trigger the trap, and we just went through the whole thing. Uh, so it sucks. She's just going to go here sucks but what can you do really sucks because um i can't get into the blind spot now so i'm just gonna have to take a bleed token when attacking but that's fine what can i do okay okie doke so all survivors are doomed that's fine full move we already talked about all this um so Yeast is going to get knocked down. We'll assume... I don't even know what's going to happen to Lee. She might die, but... Tech suffers... Uh, six damage to two random hit locations and knockback ten. Uh, now it's knockback ten this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. So she does not have her reroll, so... She didn't collide with anything. Attacker encounters board edge. Ten plus... Uh, suffer... So she needs a 6-plus to suffer brain damage, or she just flies out into the distance. So that's going to trigger the reshuffle of the deck here. Uh, I definitely need her to, to live, <laughs> so I can, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, can I, oh wait, I need to roll the 2. Well, okay, I already picked this up. Let me shuffle, and then I need to roll the 2, which is going to be a body and a hand. Uh, so, I mean, that's definitely enough. So, body in hand, six damage. That's a heavy, this is a severe body injury, severe arm injury. So, I need to roll on this now. If she lives through this, so severe body, one, she's dead. I'm just going to let her, oh no, I need her cat, I circle it. Oh my gosh. How many hits are left? Six hits. I can't. I can't keep burning rerolls. I'm just gonna let her die because I need to reroll this, and then I might need to reroll when she flew off the board. So it doesn't matter. I, I have to let her die. So she's just gonna die. Yeah. There's no. I have no choice. She. Yeah, no choice, really. Okay. <sighs> okay, so she's dead. Um, um, that was the end of the trap, right? Oh, yeah, because then it was a 1 to 5. She flew off. She's not going to fly off. We don't have to worry about any of the rest of that stuff. I think... Oh, I reshuffled the deck. Uh, I can't remember if there's anything else on the trap, and I don't want to go through it looking for it. Uh, should I go? No, what was it? I'm trying to read through it. 
my head. I don't think there was anything else. It would have been, yeah, six plus. When I say six plus, she would have gotten brain damage, and that's what I said I needed. So, yeah, there was nothing else left. She's dead anyway, so she died. It's done. I don't even need to worry about the, the rest of the trap. It's over. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess we s encourage with Atrium to get her to stand. So we get Yisa to stand. Uh, we attack. Because now I don't have Cat, I circle it. Oh, I still have Wisdom Potion. Uh, so Wisdom Potion, because Yisa has it. So I'll be able to see at least this. This is the first strike. Flexes and gains plus two toughness until the end of the round. It's fine. Yisa can attack into this. Uh, we'll just hope the trap's not the second or third card. So Yisa, four strengths. She's going to gain bleed because I, I can't get to the, the blind spot. Because there's a train piece behind her. Or behind him, I mean. Survivor attacks the Lion God from a space in the Whiplash Zone. They gain one bleeding token before drawing hit locations. Unless they're in the monster's blind spot. And then if they're surging, they gain an additional... So, yep, okay, well, let's just attack four speed. She's going to gain a bleeding token, so she's at two bleed tokens. Four speed, hitting on a one. No, two. Black Sword has five, she's got no accuracy, so hitting on a three. Full speed hitting on a three. Oh my gosh, she missed twice? Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, not the trap. Maybe it was a good thing that she missed. Okay, so this is the first strike. She plus some two toughness. It literally doesn't matter. Yisa's got 30 strength. So she wounds on... Uh, I mean, this is even on a failure. So she's not even going to... She just wounds on a one. Or anything but a one, I mean, and crits on a eight. Oh, it almost was an eight. Uh. <sighs> okay, well, that's a wound. It would have been an eight had I not rolled into the cards. Okay, so I don't need to shuffle this. It's one wound. <sighs> okay, this is definitely going to be a wound. Uh, or critting on an 8. So critting on an 8 or missing on a 1. That's a critical. Lion God suffers minus 1 toughness. I don't really mind the minus 1 toughness, but whatever. So minus 1 toughness token. I already had minus 1 toughness. I haven't even been taking account for it because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, so he gains another minus 1 toughness token. I probably should be taking better account of these. So he's actually got toughness 12 now. But again, it th that doesn't even really matter for like Isa and kind of. It's three hits left. Uh, let's see what the top card is, because of Wisdom Potion. So I have a flank. Turn the Lion God to face the attacker and full move forward in a straight line. Cancel all hits now out of range. Survivor pass suffers grab. Okay, well, this is the one that's at least a failure. Uh, I could surge into this, but that would give Isa. Two more bleed tokens. I can't even get there with kind of one, two, three, four, five. I could. I, I'd have to dash. <sighs> Whatever. I'm going to dash. Uh, bring this kind of down to five survival. She does not get it back. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. It's such a bad idea. But if I can kill it. Uh, no, I can't. Well, we make it perform basic action, which is so much better than having Relentless Chain. Because there's there was too many cards in there. There's five cards that were... The whole deck was Relentless. It would have just Relentless Chained me to death. So I'd rather him be doing basic action. Uh... Okay, so now we're attacking with Kenna. She's going to gain a bleed token. That's her first bleed token. She does have bandages. Uh, so... She's going to attack with the Adventure Sword because she doesn't have any insanity. She can't use Twilight Sword. So it's going to be three speed... Uh, anything. Anything but a one with the Adventure Sword. Anything but a one. 
Uh, that's three hits. That's good enough. So this card... Three... Okay, none of those are the trap. If I can just wound here, I'll be able to see what the last card is. So none of these are first strikes, and they're all failures, except for this one right here is a reflex. Uh, well, we'll see what happens. Okay, so these are all failures. Uh, she only fails on a 1. She crits on a 8 and fails on a 1. 7. That's not a failure, not a crit. Okay. Uh, 2. Not a failure, not a crit. Again, I'll add it up just in case, but it's 9 because she's attacking with the Adventure Sword. So it's 9 strength. Oh, she's got 5 strength, which is 14. It's got minus 2 toughness. It already, it's, it's anything but a 1. So this is the one. Anything but a 1 or crit on a 8. That's a critical. Attacker gains. Five, oh, wow. Double crit. That's 5 insane. So 5 survival. So that brings her up to 8 again. Wait. So I did, wait, did I roll on this already and forget to remove it? Okay, I think I did because there was three hits left. So I think I, I rolled on that already and forgot to move it. Uh, so I should have actually rolled on this should be the crit. The attacker may spend four survival to gain plus one permanent strength. Uh, no, I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to spend four survival to get plus one permanent strength. She doesn't need it. <laughs> She's got five strength. Or should I just spend four survival to gain plus one permanent strength? So that would, yeah, because she got three hits. Um, should I spend four survival to get plus one permanent strength? Would bring her down to one survival. Whatever. Yeah, I'll spend four survival to bring her down to one. So it brings her down to one survival. <sighs> One survival is a little bit low. Okay, but he's at basic action now. So what I can do is move to here with Atrium. So he's also closest. I can look at this card because of Wisdom Potion. Yeah. It's not the trap. Uh, Riot Mace. Two speed. Oh, it's... What's his, what's his odds? Five plus... Oh, it's going to be... He's going to hit twice. But he's, I'll just do it. All right, he's going to hit twice. I, I mean, maybe not, but it's two speed, accuracy, no, two speed, accuracy, two plus. He didn't. He hit twice. Double four. Okay, just don't be the trap. It's not the trap. Okay. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Lanterns, increase glow, Disney attacker gains minus one accuracy token or ends their attack. Well, okay, I'll take a minus one accuracy token. Whatever. Uh, if I wound, he's dead. So I'll just do this one first, just so I get doubled it. So he takes minus one accuracy token. I don't care. Because I'm trying to kill it. <laughs> so Atrium gains a minus one accuracy token. Big deal. Okay. Um, five. Atrium has four. That's nine. He's got minus two toughness. Uh, nine, my, so it's 11. He needs a three plus. Seven. That's a wound. Whew. So seven is a wound. That will kill this stupid thing. Uh, just in case, just in case I misplayed there and I, but I'm almost positive I rolled three hits with Kenna, but just in case I didn't, we'll go, this needs just be a three plus. Five. So there, and there's an extra wound from, uh, Atrium, just in case I forgot just in case I messed that up, but I don't think I did. <laughs> I think I forgot to... I think what happened was I took the AI card from here and forgot to remove the hit location card from here. And then uh, rolled again on the same hit location card by accident. But even if I did, and I forgot now, I did an extra damage with Atrium. So, uh, that kills the stupid thing. <laughs> oh, this thing is so stressful, this fight. Uh... So Lee died, which was fine. She, I was never probably going to use her again because she just got dead inside and she had PTSD. So she couldn't even have departed next time anyway. What was the next card? Was it the trap? It was not. Well, that's good. 
I mean, not good, but... Okay, uh, what do we get? It's like eight basic resources, I think. I had no interest in going down the ne necropolis. <laughs> I just had no interest. <laughs> uh, so we get Necromancer's Eye, which is great. And then eight basic, which I'll grab right now. So eight basic. Uh, and then we get Knowledge Worm, which is... Actually, I think, unbelievable. Actually, let me look at this. Um, where's Knowledge Worm? I know I set it aside. Right here, right? Isn't this Knowledge Worm? Yes, Knowledge Worm. Um, so, here's Knowledge Worm. This thing has 10 plus, is this, any of the party survivors ever have 10 plus insanity, they eat the knowledge worm, which uh, hopefully would have been really bad because that would have made sure that Kenna would have ate it. But, you know, actually losing all of her insanity might have been like a blessing in disguise. So, yeah, we gained knowledge worm. So when Lenny got defeated, if Selma does not have knowledge worm innervation or necromancer, knowledge worm. So we hit the knowledge worm real quick. And then I'm going to gain this, and I think the most insane survivor eats it. So losing all that insanity was kind of from that, from that Sun Moon event might have actually been a, a good thing. So Knowledge Worm. Uh, survivor's approach to the defeated Lion God. It's expression serene... Wait. It's expression serene as a massive worm slithers from its mouth. Uh, climb the staircase. Then we roll 1d10. Uh, who still has re-rolls on this? Just Yisa and Kenna still have re-rolls? So, we don't have Except Darkness, so we're looking for 5+, plus, or we're re-rolling, I think. 7, which is a 5+. plus. As they walk up the steps, uh, the survivor is disarmed by a vibration in the air. Horrified as they are by the sight of it, the closer they get, the more overcome they are by pity for this bizarre yet helpless creature. The others waiting below are... Uh, wait, who who rolls on this? Oh, I forgot to read who rolls it. Survivors trace a... Da, 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 bulls, uh, recruitation disgusting worm by a si uh, about the size of a small child. The worm's skin oozes silver and glows light blue in the darkness of the ruins. The survivors are equally overcome by revulsion and intrigue as the worm uh, rides and girdles on a landing above them. Nominate a victorious survivor. Okay, so it's Atrium. We're, we're doing Atrium because I don't want to use Yisa or Kenna. So it's definitely Atrium. Uh, they rolled a 7+. plus As they walk up the steps, the survivors are... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, doesn't take... Uh, the other way below, nauseated first. When the survivor picks up the worm and holds it in their arms as if they were only their own offspring. However, it doesn't take long for the spell to take root in them after the worm is carried back down the steps. Nobody can say why, but everyone agrees that the worm is important. Then they carry it back to the settlement. Gain the knowledge worm innovation. So that was the knowledge worm innovation I just went over. So that's Atrium who did that, because I can't do that stuff with Kenna or Yisa. Uh, oh, then we get Necromancer's Eye and what I say, eight and one iron. Yeah, we gain Necromancer's Eye, 8 basic, and 1 iron. So we draw 8 basic here. So, 1, perfect Orion, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Lots of hide, I guess. Not all of the hide, but enough. Uh, and one strange, or one iron. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, we did get eight. Okay, so, uh, these are discarded. Oh, I was tense, and I played so poorly. <laughs> Very tense, and I played poorly. Not a good combination. So, uh, with that, that is the Lion God. Surprised we beat him. Uh, it can, could have gone very bad, very quickly. Uh, sorry, Lee. <laughs> uh, you were very, very good while you lasted. Um, so, with that, um, oh yeah, I gotta get Necromancer's Eye. One second. Okay, so here's Necromancer's Eye. It's, um, unique accessory. Ignore the effects of blind. So, reveal the next 
four monster hit locations, put them back in any order. So it's just a cat eye circlet, but a helmet, and lets me ignore blind with someone like Yisa. Uh, so that's great. <laughs> that's the Necromancer's Eye. It's really good. Uh, combined with cat eye circlet, it's crazy good. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next Lantern Year and then in the Slenderman fight. So, settlement event after the Lion God. Hopefully no one eats this knowledge worm. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs>